Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in last week's episode, we showed how we started to prepare sanding the boom, and also cutting uh, some more fiberglass skin off the coach house. This week's video, we're going to get really aggressive, we're going to go all the way down through, remove a lot of this core, and we find a little bit more rot and a little bit more termite damage, we have to open up this up a little bit further. We also will show how we remove the mizzen step. Uh, this is important because we really struggle with this. There's quite an interesting compression structure underneath it. Uh, I'll put a link to a video we did once before on that. But uh, hope you certainly enjoy it. Thanks, everybody. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Well, good morning. It's Sunday, the 11th of March, and we're back on the boat today. Uh, we're actually double teaming some work, so Deb's going to help me do in the sand and the boom while I start working on cutting some more holes in the roof. So it's time to get that boom out. So one of the things a yard does really well is they actually get themselves set up for a job and then they do the job. We do small increments of work so I feel like we're always moving stuff around. Thus we're doing this now. Alright, with Deb set up and sanding the boom, I'm going to go back here, remove the tarps, and kind of pick up where I left off yesterday. I'm going to remove that mass step. I brought a massive screwdriver today. I'm hoping that will allow me to get the rest of those screws out. And then once that is cut open and I get that piece removed, I'm also going to remove the forward opening uh, hatch as well as the traveler car so I can get to that piece of rotted wood as well. I believe that's all of it, but we'll see as we get in there and dig around. Well, this work needs to get done, but it also requires coffee. Hmm. I love this big old ship's bell. Um, listen to this thing. But new aluminum mass, I'm gonna have to come up with a new way to mount this because bronze and aluminum don't like each other. All right, you may recall, this is where we left off yesterday. We were working on the mast step uh, and we had these massive screws that go down through this actual step and hold it down to uh, it goes through the fiberglass, through the core, and into this uh, solid wooden structure that essentially is a compression um, framework. I won't say compression post because it's over a door frame. Um, so I went ahead and got me a giant screwdriver that has a <laughs> open end wrench on the top. I can get an open end wrench on there to turn it. We'll see if this doesn't help out. Now that seems to be doing it. Um, at least with this one. Let's see if we... Oop, see, I started getting cocky there. Oh, the Zephyr 2.0 just went by. It uh, looked like an all-girl sailing team. Uh, it looked like a race team. They were all dressed in their race gear, and it's kind of cool. So this seems to work if I take it nice and slow and steady. When I try and get a little cocky and rotate all the way around, that's when it, the uh, screwdriver slips out of the head of the screw. So this may take 30 or 40 minutes. I won't bore you with all the footage. Good size screws, maybe three and a half inches or so. All right, I think I still have another one up here. I gotta dig out the sealant. I'm gonna go down below and see. What I believe these things actually have is a um, a countersunk barrel nut on the end of the other side, which is really odd to me, but that's what it appears to be. I'm gonna go down and take another look and see what they are and the number of them that are there. That might help indicate to me whether or not. I have enough of them out to try prying this up short of this one or or if I've got another issue. Just to orient yourself, this is the top of the rear stateroom um, door and then this kind of goes up and this is that support structure I was referring to. Uh, that mass step is drilled down through the top into that. So I'm going to show you the underside of this, see if we can see these. You'll notice these holes here. Let's see if I can get close. It's a very odd looking connector in these. I can see that one. That is not a square screw or nut. It almost looks like the back end of a barrel nut of some sort. And now I'm starting to think that may just be something holding this piece of wood to the other two pieces of wood that would be sandwiched between this 
and the actual rooftop. So very interesting, but we're gonna have to take a look at that and dig a little closer. Let me see if I can show you one of the other ones here. All right, you can see it pretty good right here. And then there are more right there. As a matter of fact, you can see where that leaked at one point. So it appears, at least according to this, there's three along the front, one or two in the center, and three on the back. Essentially, that may mean that um, this is a different set of screws because I do not see anything up top, not bungs or anything that would indicate something coming down and meeting up with that sort of barrel nut end, if you will. Now let's go back up top and try and give it a pry and see what happens. All right, so as I come back up top, like I said, I just don't see where those meet. So I'm gonna try again on this one screw that appears to be stuck right here. And, um, and then I'm gonna try tapping those uh, pry bars up underneath this to see if I can start to break it loose at all. And maybe we'll get more indication of what's going on, especially if I can get this piece off. We'll see. I'm going to start calling this the world's oh shit tool. If you've ever done this before, I would advise, <laughs> I've learned this when I was taking out the deck screws. If this is the screw head, see if you can see this, you've got the round screw head and the slot here. Don't clamp your pliers this way and press in on the sides. What will happen is it'll bend up these tabs, closing that piece and ultimately breaking off the tab. If you put your pliers this way, your vice grips this way, and squeeze, it tends not to break. So I'm not sure how well you can see that in the video, uh, but it really is a helpful little tip I learned after breaking 20 or 30 of the bronze screws when removing the deck, teak. So what I'm really doing is I'm just kind of going along the edge. I'm starting in one spot with the thinnest of my um, pry bars. And then just next to it, I'll go ahead and with the thicker one and put it in. And again, I just kind of repeat the process to give it a little bit of a gap. Uh, and I want to work that material loose underneath. That's kind of the only thing I'm, I've been trying to accomplish here. I heard that crack a little bit, not the wood, but actually the sealant break loose. So that's good. Ah, give way. I feel like a boxer after one of those matches. Like I gotta go up and like fist bump the dude and congratulate him on a good fight. Congrats on a good fight, you stupid piece of wood with a lot of this goopy stuff on here. This, whatever this is, this is what was below the, um, below the plywood in the core. I am thoroughly impressed with whatever this is. Um, I might save a little bit and see if Michael knows because it was impressive. Hell, look at this. You can even see here where this thing pulled up the layers of glass and separated it. Remember I was, when I was punching in there, I said I was hearing the, the glass break? That's what was breaking. Just amazing. And what does it mean? It means I get to do all that again and start pulling this up. Because my guess is the screws that are going down through here are gonna make this a little tougher to pry out of there. More of that adhesive X pattern, you can see it's, it's amazingly strong stuff, but here's where that termite damage is. And you can see it goes to about here and then it sort of stops. And when you look at like the cut edge, right here, looks great, right? I'm gonna go to the side where it's exposed and you can see how as good as it looks right in this edge, it goes to shit pretty quick right in here. I'm going to try and zoom into that so you can see that really good, but that's pretty shocking to me. The good news is this beam is solid, uh, the one that goes across the ship. But you can see how the core looks good here. So we definitely went to the right spot, right? The core here looks good. The core here, you can't see it from there, but it looks really good as well. And I might have to go a little further back. The core here, yeah, I may need to go back a little bit further near this hatch just to be safe goes to show the importance of doing something like this right. You know, imagine the amount of work that's going into this. I don't want to ever have to do this again. So I want this repair to outlast me at least. This is the head wall and it kind of goes at about that angle right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right along that same line just because that's a good solid place to put the new 
piece of wood right there. There's also a beam that runs right about here. So I'm going to run and cut that right now. Yesterday I was getting little sawdust chips in my face and don't want to repeat that today. With all the open compartments down below into the engine room and into the bilge, I'm just trying to keep this a little bit neat with the sawdust um, and I don't want to have a problem with that. So, boy, I sure wish they'd all come out that easy, huh? After further inspection, I noticed a little bit more to the right of the hatch had to come out as well. Well, it just started raining pretty good. I'm just working underneath the canopy here and trying to get all this stuff cleaned up. I got this section right here kind of cleaned up. I'll just vacuum it in a little bit, but I'm using the oscillating scraper and it works pretty well. This is when it's nice to have the tent city. But as you can see, it's raining pretty good out here. All right, I came down below. It's starting to rain pretty good. Deb's still making good progress on the boom. I can hear the air sander still going, so she must have scooted in the, uh, under the roof a little bit. Um, I'm going to come down below and I'm going to start working on removing the uh, traveler car bracket because that's the last spot of the roof I think I'm going to have to cut out of here uh, as part of the repair. So let me show you what we've got going on there. All right, so you can actually see some of the roof out right back there uh, over the part of the galley. But the spot I'm working on right now is right here behind this uh, opening hatch. You can see the metal um, backing plate here for the traveler car. So. I'm going to start working on removing all of those nuts so that I can lift that up off the top and I'll probably have to remove the hatch as well. So, yeah, I had to get off the boat for a little bit of a break. I hear the sand in, so she's actively working on it, I can tell. Hey, baby. Yeah, you can see just how good this looks going all the way down the, the bare wood, huh? Forget just how long the booms are on these things, but it sure looks nice. I am done for the day. It's starting to rain here again. So, yep. We got another lovely storm coming in. Um, but, uh, yeah, my lovely boo boo. Um, this we'll address and look at a little more detail tomorrow. Um, it's a little soft, so we want to expect that to figure out why. And the same with these two pieces right here. This one um, needs to have a little bit more epoxy put into it because when I sanded it down, a big chunk came popping out. So I'll just get a little tiny bit, refill these in and then sand them smooth and then varnish. The mess looks great. We can also see where there's been a couple of repairs done to it before. I think we'll end up scarfing a repair as well in these spots Deb showed. So this is the next section I'm about to start working on and we'll see how it goes here. You can see here I went ahead and opened up the hatch up here. I have all of the nuts removed and the backing plate from these screws that hold on the traveler car. And um, as I'm looking into this hatch, it does look like this little section right here is definitely a bit rotted. What's more concerning is this doesn't appear to be termites. This looks like it's wood intrusion and rot. So I've got to look at how this is attached may need to do something there as well. So I'm removing this traveler here. I've got a couple of the bolts started on this side. And let's see if we can just get it pulled up or off of here. Well, after a lot of hemming and hawing, finally got this part off. So I'll tell you what's interesting. There were bungs in here with threaded rods and nuts on each end. I couldn't get the nuts off on the top side. They're buried too far in here, but from the bottom side I was able to and to pry it up. This is interesting. On the bottom side of this, where each of these bungs are and those nuts, when this was repaired once before, those were cut off or dis disconnected and somebody just sealed it down to the fiberglass with, uh, well, now that I said that, sealed it down to the fiberglass with nothing. I don't know what the hell was even holding this down, to be perfectly candid with you. It was tight, there's no doubt about that. But it required a lot of uh, prying off of here. My guess is it was just the polyester resin that was holding this down. It was probably set on here when it was wet. 
part of the reason it may be leaking. So I'll clean this up and take it home to do it. All right, it's Monday after work and I came back by the yard just to do a little bit more cleanup on where I removed some of the core yesterday. Got a lot of it done, but uh, ran out of daylight, so I'm just gonna get this next section cleaned up and I'll show you what that looks like here around this forward hatch. Uh, with the lighting's good and I can show you kind of a close up of what I'm looking at, working on here. Uh, here's the hatch itself and then right here along these beams, I don't know if you can see this, you see that little gray material? That is whatever adhesive or epoxy or polyester resin was used to hold the old core down to this frame structure. So I have some cleanup to do there. Uh, I still have a little bit pieces of the core where it was attached. You can see there and there. I've got a couple of old nails I need to remove. Uh, and just cleaning this up. But you can see here along this edge, uh, right there, the core that's existing here is really good. So I've gotten rid of all of the sections of it that had the termite damage or the rot. Um, all right, I've got these frames all cleaned up, removed all the pieces of core that were still stuck to it, any sealant or material that was still on there. Um, still have to pull the, the nail heads out that broke, but this is all ready to go. I'll probably put a layer of epoxy right on the top of these beams. And when that dries, um, it'll be ready to accept new core to go on top of that. So I find it's always good to come back and take a second look a day or two later at your project and make sure that you're on the right track. I'm gonna show you what I did. I came here today and I just realized I kind of left a little bit of this that um, in a blade that I sh probably shouldn't have. So I'll show you what I did here near the companion way. And I'm gonna actually expand out my cut a little bit more just to give the final repair a, um, a better solution and where it's going to mat match up with the hatch cover. So just to the left of the companion way here, kind of look at this. You'll notice here, I have a nice edge along here and I'm a little rotted right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut from this beam, from this beam here, right along the edge of this companion way hatch and right along the edge here. And what that'll allow me to do is put plywood right up to the very edge and allow the fiberglass to uh, fill right to the edge as well, rather than trying to mate it to a surface that isn't great. Uh, that'll also give me a little bit more room. Let's see if I can show downward here. That'll also give me a little bit more room as I scarf this piece of the bulkhead in. Uh, so instead of trying to do it from down below, I'll be able to come from the top, insert it all the way down in here the way I need to, and adhere it right into this good part of the bulkhead. Uh, and this is just a support beam going across that I haven't cleaned up yet. I didn't make a ton of progress today, but I did get some of the uh, beams cleaned up and prepared the surface so that I could put the new core in. I've got a little bit more of that cleanup to do tomorrow, and I want to talk to Mike a little bit about a section near the companionway. Uh, check out what his thoughts are there. I also need to do a little research to see how these companionways are actually attached to the boat. Uh, I'm actually considering pulling the main companionway off, removing the beams, and replacing the core all the way underneath that, and then re-bedding that down, because I do believe that might be part of the area where I've been getting some leaks around that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that too, or at least look into it. Give way, you whore. Give way, bitch. Give way. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this week's video. I think it's really helpful when Deb comes down and helps on the boat and she's doing one project and I'm doing another. We seem to make some pretty good progress. So if you're in a situation like this, I hope you also have somebody that can help out on some of the projects. Do us a favor, give us a, thumb, a thumbs up, a like, a go ahead and subscribe, share this video with your friends. And also we put two videos up here we think you might enjoy. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks a bunch and safe sailing.